Don't throw your money away. Why do we keep putting money into an investment, even if the smart thing to do would be to give it up? Let's talk about the sunk cost fallacy. What is it? The sunk cost fallacy describes our tendency to follow through an endeavor, even if we have already invested time, effort, and money into it, whether or not the current costs outweigh the benefits. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. 91% of the people here don't hit the subscribe button. Don't be like them. When you smash that button, it helps me to make more videos just like this one to bring to you guys more content. So smash that subscribe button and the like button and the notification button. That's going to be helpful. All right, let's get started. So what is sunk cost fallacy? What is that? Well, this video, we want to help you uh, to identify sources of cognitive bias and develop real solutions. So let's just imagine that you bought a concert ticket a few weeks ago for 50 bucks. It's your favorite group. They're coming to town. On the day of the concert, you feel sick and it's raining outside. Now, you know traffic is going to be worse when it rains. And you also have the risk of getting sicker by going to the concert. Although it seems as though the current drawbacks outweigh the benefits, why are you still likely to choose to go to the concert? This is known as the sunk cost fallacy. We are likely to continue an endeavor if we have already invested in it. This often means that we go against evidence that shows it is no longer the best decision we could make, such as sickness or the weather condition uh, that is affecting the event. In economic turn, terms, sunk costs are costs that have already been incurred and cannot be recovered. So in the concert example, the $50 we spent on the concert tickets would not be recovered whether we went to the concert or not. So it stands to reason that it, would, it should not be a factor in our current decision making because it is irrational to use unrecoverable costs as a rationale for making a present decision. If we act rationally, then only future costs and benefits would be taken into account. Because regardless of what we have already invested, we will not get it back whether or not we follow through on the decision. So the sunk cost fallacy means that we are making irrational decisions because we are factoring in influences other than the current alternatives. The fallacy affects many different areas in our lives, leading to suboptimal outcomes. Well, let's look at some examples. Education. Education is a billion dollar industry in the United States alone, not to mention worldwide. And often we are asked to pay for our educational programs in advance here in the U.S. Then once we paid for the program, we are unlikely to drop that program even if we find a free program with a better success rate and still getting the same degrees because we have already invested into the program, the money. Another example, uh, boring or bad movies. Now, the sunk cost fallacy also impacts smaller day-to-day -day decisions like continuing to watch a movie even if it's boring or bad. We are likely to continue watching a movie if we've invested both time and money into it even if those investments cannot be recovered by continuing to watch the movie. Age seems to have an impact on how much time we are willing to continue watching the movie. There was a study done with younger people and older people and younger people were more susceptible to the sunk cost fallacy. So we're going to talk about one more example and this has systemic effects. Now the sunk cost fallacy not only impacts us on a small in our small day-to-day -de -day decisions like attending the concert like we talked about in movies. It also has been proven to impact the decisions that governments and big companies make. Now there's a famous example of the sunk cost fall fallacy impacting large-scale decisions and was coined the Concord fallacy. Now in 1956 the supersonic transport aircraft committee met to discuss building a supersonic airplane, the Concorde. Now, French and British 
engine manufacturers and French and British governments were involved in the project that was estimated to cost almost $100 million. And that was in 1956. Now, long before the project was over, it was clear that they were increasing costs and that the financial gains of the plane, once it was used, would never offset those increasing costs. However, the project continued. The manufacturers and the governments followed through on the project because they had already made significant financial investments and dedicated a lot of time to the project. Ultimately, this led to millions of dollars being wasted and Concord operated for less than 35 years. In fact, they stopped flying the Concord in 2003. Only 14 of the aircraft actually went into service. And because the government was involved, taxes were misused. So why is this important to us? When we use or become susceptible to the sunk cost fallacy, even if it's not on purpose, it means that we're making decisions that are irrational and lead to suboptimal outcomes. When we are focused on our past investments instead of our present and future costs and benefits, meaning that we commit ourselves to decisions that are no longer in our best interests, it's, it's detrimental to us. The more we invest, the more we feel committed to continuing with the endeavor. And the more resources we're more than likely going to put into that uh, to follow through with our decisions. So why does it happen? The sunk cost fallacy occurs because of our emotions and often uh, cause us to deviate from rational decisions. Abandoning an endeavor from after committing to it for so long and investing resources into it are likely to cause negative feelings of guilt and wastefulness. And since we want to avoid negative feelings and loss, we are more than likely to follow through on the decision that we have invested in, even if it is not in our best interests. So how do we avoid it? Well, since the sunk cost fallacy is thought to be caused by our desires to avoid negative emotions, we should try to take our emotions out of the equation when making a decision. However, emotions are powerful and hard to ignore. So get help from those around you. You have uh, those that have your best interests in mind, the people that love you, and uh, those people will help you make good decisions. By applying these ideas and principles, it's going to help you to grow and develop beyond your imagination. Your limits are boundless. It's all up to you, my friend. Thank you guys for being here so much. We appreciate it. Without you, we couldn't do this. Uh, hit that like button and that bell for notifications and smash that subscribe button. When you smash that subscribe button, it helps me to make more videos just like this one to bring you guys more content. So smash that like button. Uh, check out clairesway.com. Those guys are amazing. If you're looking for a six-figure income within six to nine months, they can help you. They can answer all your questions. clairesway.com. Check them out when you have time. Uh, have a great day. Ciao, ciao.